I'd like to introduce you to this year's Airline Aviation and Aerospace Christian Fellowship Cabaret Act. It's 1990, it's Eastbourne, and it's this year's concert for the ACF Conference Weekend. Welcome! Yay. We have very distinguished guests, as people have come a long way, we're going to have a very good evening. Shall we just commend it to our God? Oh Jesus, we've been learning what a what a gifted, what a multifaceted God you are, what a wonderful mind you have. And Lord, tonight we want to represent part of your personality. We want to show part of the creativity which comes from you. Lord, you've gifted some of us to share um, the joy that we have, the fun that we have, and we want to give it to others. Lord, we commit tonight's proceedings. Let everybody be refreshed. Uh, let everybody have something that they're really going to enjoy. And Lord, tonight, this is entertainment. And help us to just relax in you. Uh, and if I can say in such a gathering, maybe even divert our interest for a few moments. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name, bless our fun and fellowship. Amen. 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 Right, we're off. We're off. The very first opening guest. Well, there's no other way to introduce this guy. I have to say it again. He's got looks, he's got talent, and he's got me. <laughs> what more need be said? Well, I'm a romantic at heart, and a few years ago, well, a couple of years ago, we were on holiday in Nairobi. I'm going to embarrass Jane, right? So, okay, this is what, what uh, Ronnie was talking about, revenge, you see. This is my revenge. And uh, we were having a walk on the beach one night in, in Mombasa. It was full moon, and there was water lapping on the shore, and it was all very romantic. We were walking down the beach, and I wrote this song... For Jane, and uh, but I said it to two tunes, and one of the tunes says, uh, "Newlyweds are the weds to be aren't here yet." And I'm like, the one, one of the tunes is very romantic, so I'll sing a verse of that, and then I'll sing the other version, which is totally different, and invite some audience participation. So it can be really gooey eyed It's my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Diamonds on the water Pearls set in ebony Voice that speaks so softly Your heartbeat plays a symphony Next to me So that's that version which is It's quite nice but it's a bit gooey So the next version has got a chorus to it which uh, I'd like you all to join in. The word, the line I want you to sing is in your eyes, okay? So it's very simple. And you'll know it when we come to it, okay? In your eyes, just remember that. I want you to shout it out loud, okay? So it goes. I see diamonds, diamonds on the water, and a pearl set ever on you. That speaks so softly now In your heart you play as a sin on me Well, you can say a thousand words Is it harvest? It follows rain Well, the ruins, they lie behind us now Again, it's your bed. In your eyes, every star I see is falling. In your eyes, I see a desert sky. In your eyes, I can almost 
touch the flame as love is born again. Well, love has surely rescued me. And it's opened up my eyes to love someone as he loves me. Well, tonight there's no disguise. In your eyes, every star I see is falling. In your eyes, I see a desert sky. In your eyes, I can almost touch the flame. It's love. Is born again once more in your eyes. Every star I see is falling. In your eyes, I see a desert sky. Oh, in your eyes, I can almost touch the flame. It's love. I said love. It's love. Is born again. Church is filled to overflowing, the faithful packed in every pew. God has really blessed his people, everything we have is new. Smart cars parked in rows outside, you sit pressed and looking flash. Then it comes to time for giving, 10% strictly cash. Well, all I have I thank the Lord for, mine to use until he calls. The trouble is, he speaks so quiet, I can hardly hear it all. Nothing wrong with having money, prosperity is mine to share. When it comes to time for giving, 10%, it's always there. The poor will always be around us, but I know the good Lord cares. As for me, I give my portion, 10%, it's always there. In the far off land, the baby cries, washed by the tears, his mother cries. Praise the Lord, I give my share, 10%, it's always there. Slowly, one step at a time. Listen for that still small voice from behind saying, This is your way, neither to the left or to the right. Following Jesus through your darkest night. Our cross to carry, our troubles to bear. And through his cross, your pain is. Always share The road seems long But you're not alone His loving touch will guide your feet Between the stones Your feeble hands He will make strong When you stumble He will hold you To fearful hearts He says be strong And do not fear God will come in time to save you. Then the blind will see, the deaf will hear. The wilderness will flow with streams of water. The tongues of the dumb will shout, the lame will leap like deer. They will see the splendor of our God. There will be a highway called the way of holiness 
For those who are unclean will never change It will be for those who walk in His righteous name The ransomed of the Lord who will return And they will enter Zion with singing in their hearts Everlasting joy will crown their hands And the lightness and joy will overtake them the Sorrow and sighing will flee away, will flee away They will enter Zion with singing in their hearts Everlasting joy will crown their hands And gladness and joy will overtake them Sorrow and sighing will flee away, will flee Somebody asked me this morning, I think it was, did I ever have any fun in my job as an immigration officer? And uh, that reminded me, with apologies to any Americans who may be in the congregation, you know, you know what Winston Churchill said about England and America, don't you? He said, they're two nations divided by a common language. But uh, many years ago, I was on duty in the immigration hall at Gatwick, and uh, we had a party of American tourists from the Midwest, I think they were. And I was beavering away, and the American lady who come and stood in front of me, she said, say, she said, do you know your clock shows a different time on each side? We had one of those pendant clocks in the middle of the hall, place on each side. She said, your clock shows a different time on each side. So without thinking, I said, yes, madam, you want to be very careful while you're in England. Have a good look out for those clocks. They're very rare. It's a left-handed clock. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> It's a left-handed clock. <laughs> she came back about five minutes later and dug me in the rib and said, you're having me on, aren't you? <laughs> Mind you, English passengers are not much better. I used to say to English tourists coming back from Venice, uh, you had a nice time while you've been there? Yes, very nice. What was the weather like? Oh, not bad. No, I said, I thought I had a lot of rain there. The streets were all flooded. No, it was all right while we were there. <laughs> But the real reason for me being here today is to tell you a story I heard on holiday a couple of weeks ago. There was an old farmer and his wife from Mid Wales. They'd worked hard on the farm. They'd never even left the farm apart from going down to the local town for market on occasions. And they got to a ripe old age when they felt they ought to retire. So they sold up the farm and with their son John, they got into their battered old farm car <coughs> and decided to go and see life. So they got down as far as Cardiff, never been to Cardiff before, and as they drove into Cardiff they came along to one of these ultra-modern hotels. I don't know Cardiff these days so I don't know where it is, but an ultra-modern hotel standing by the side of the road. And this intrigued the old farmer and he was determined to go in and have a look what it was like in this tremendous building. So he said to his wife, you'd better stop in the car here because I heard these people down here are not too honest. They might steal it. You stay here. John, you come with me. So they went into this posh hotel, sank up to their ankles in carpet as they stepped through the foyer and found themselves confronted by a battery of lifts. This was something they'd never seen in their lives. And the old man stood there open mouthed as he saw the lifts operating, going up and down, lots of flashing lights. And then he saw an old lady press the button and open the door and walk in and in a flash disappeared. And a couple of minutes later, down came the lift again and a beautiful young lady stepped out. <laughs> and he turned around and he said, John, go and get your mother quick.
34th and Vine In their car at the stop sign Are the Smiths on their way to Sunday school While it, <coughs> they say hi to Mr. Grove Who is bringing out his boat particularly Who's going to be down by the lake a day or two church near Valley Station, the preacher tells the congregation about social action, law and civil rights. <coughs> <coughs> While across the subdivision, you may watch the television, hoping that their favourite ball team survive. Matthew 24, that as in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and they were drinking, they were marrying and they were giving in marriage, until the flood came and took them all away. Two men will be working in the field, the one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be working at the mill, the other one will be taken other left. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when your Lord will come. The last Sunday, the last Sunday, connected with flying. The only link I've got with flying is through my brother who was with British Airways for a number of years. My job is in personnel management 
And so I have a lot of personal and domestic problems to deal with in my job. And when I was going through a particularly bad patch in my own life, somebody gave me these verses, and I'd like to share them with you. They're really rather nice. I've given them to a lot of our staff, and I think they've found comfort from them as well. The first one is called An Awful Day. Today, Lord, has been awful. It started badly. Imps of depression sat on the bedpost waiting for me to wake, ready to pounce on me, to harry me and fill me with their gloom. My head ached, my nerves were edgy, and I felt irritable. And then it rained. Not a decent sort of rain, soon over and done with, but a penetrating, miserable, drooling kind of rain that wet-blanketed soul as well as body. There are days like that, Master. Days when life is heavy, boring and meaningless. Days when no ray pierces the inward gloom. Just plain bad days. What is your recipe for such hours, Lord? I am reminded of some words which were often on your lips. Take heart. They must have comforted your followers many times. You used them when they were startled, when they had lost their nerve, when they needed encouragement. I need encouragement, Master, so I quieten my mind and wait to hear you say, take heart. Thank you, Lord. And the second one is, my mind races. I can't be still, Lord, as you command. My body is immobile, but my mind races leaps from one subject to another, flies off at a tangent. In the distance, I hear the soft chiming of a church clock. Outside my window, seagulls ride on the wind. The friendly sparrows enjoy a morning chat. A neighbour waters her flowers. <coughs> and yet my mind races on, though my body remains relaxed. The past, the present, the future, what I have done, should have done, still have to do. Things press upon my mind from all directions. I feel chased, burdened, overwhelmed. How do I find your peace, Lord? Peace within me, a quiet mind, a tranquil heart. These are what I need, and these are what you have promised. Make me receptive, Master. Let me feel your peace flowing into my mind stilling the inward storms, calming and quieting, soothing and strengthening. Just now, Lord, just now.
Sixteen-one. <laughs> Tickets, please. Thank you, madam. Thank you. I say, I'm terribly sorry. Is this really heaven? No, sir, not quite. This is the ticket office. I didn't know you had to have a ticket to get in. I thought anybody could go in. Oh, no, sir. I see. Oh, well, it makes sense. After all, we don't want just anybody, do we? I'll have an off-peak single, then, and I don't think I'll be needing a return. <laughs> uh, no, sir. Uh, you can't buy them here. You have to hand them in to me, and everything is in order. I'll let you through. Well, where can I get one, then? All tickets have to be acquired on earth. I say, that's a bit awkward. I can't really go back, can I? Uh, no, sir. Uh, wait a minute. I just remembered. I think I have one somewhere. Jolly good, sir. <laughs> yes, here it is. Hmm. Yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is to certify that the bearer of the ticket has always led a good life, was faithful to his wife. Well, most of the time. <laughs> Loved the kids, gave to charities, was always kind and courteous. Well, to most people anyway. I mean, the neighbours get on my wick a bit at times, <laughs> but one just has to get on the best one can with such pompous ill-mannered. Uh, quite, sir, quite. I'm afraid this ticket isn't valid. Isn't valid? But it must be. It's got all the right information, hasn't it? I'm afraid it expired when you did. <laughs> Perhaps you've got another one somewhere. Yes. Let's see. Oh, here we are. Uh, this is to certify that the bearer is of sound mind and body. Can run a mile just under five minutes and swim the channel. And there we go. <laughs> and was a boxing champion at school. Has 12 O levels, five A levels, a BA degree in business. And he's very clever. It be, thus must be British Airways. <laughs> I think that sounds me up rather well. Yeah, and the mod is second to none. True, true. <laughs> This may be, sir, but it uh, just won't do. Why not? It, it's not a valid for entry, sir. Well, I don't think I've got another one. Then, I, then I'm afraid you can't come in. Look, you must have some tickets around here somewhere. I'll buy one from you now. I'll pay as much as you want. Bartley the car, OK? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've told you I don't sell tickets. Anyway, they're given away. Given away? Then how come I didn't get one? Perhaps you never asked for one, sir. Thank you, madam. Oh, there he is. Thank you, madam. Go straight in. She's got it all right. It's sex discrimination. That's what it is. She gave me the right ticket, sir. That's all. Here, let me see. This is to certify that the bearer has accepted Jesus Christ as her saviour and Lord, that she acknowledges that his blood was shed on the cross as an act of love for her, forgiving her for everything she ha has done wrong, <clears throat> paying for the gift of eternal life, and that since she accepted the gift, she has lived her life in obedience to Christ. Perhaps you have a ticket like that somewhere, sir? No, I don't believe I have. Then I'm sorry, sir. Look, couldn't you just, couldn't you let me through a side entrance? I mean, I'd make it worth your while. Sorry, sir. There's only one entrance. Perhaps you'd better try downstairs. <laughs> I'll start the joke. Well, there was this wise man, this normal man, and this stupid man. The, and they were all asked, what would they do if they were stranded in the desert? The 
Wise man said, I'd have a fan. The noble man said, I'll have a drink of water. And the stupid man said, I'll have a car door. And they go, why do you want a car door? And he says, when it gets hot, I can roll down the window. <laughs> Tomorrow, the sun refused to shine. The stars may cease to twinkle. The rivers may run dry. The mountains high and mighty may crumble to the ground. But Jesus is my fortress. In Him, my heart.
afraid your future wife didn't have much faith in you there. <laughs> 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 Yvonne said that you would do neither. Oh. <laughs> 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 right, let's Moving on quickly then. If you were out in um, public, you and I don't know, were shopping and Yvonne had to do something, would you carry her handbag in public? A, would you just hold it or would you hold it for a long time if she needed you to do that? Or would you just quickly hold it if she needed to pick something up. That was all right, was it? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. If you're out in public and you had to, Yvonne had to look at a dress or do something, but she needed to give you her handbag, would you A, hold it or, you know, for a short while, or B, for a long while? Would you be too embarrassed to hold it? How would you? I would hold it for a long while. So, a long while? Or a long while. while? Or neither? A long while. Oh. <laughs> Fiona, she'd probably ring me. Um, <laughs> what, what would be her first reaction? Would she go straight to the candles? Would she no, be because we haven't got any candles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think she would... What would her first reaction be? Go for the torch. Go for the torch. <laughs> right. And then uh, ring up. Okay, so she'd go for the torch and then ring you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Henry, what colour shoes is Carrie wearing tonight? Tonight? Yes. Now. Now. He's got more shoes than case shoes. Um, <laughs> uh, let me think. Shoes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should know because she changed them in the car. <laughs> From her boots. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what? White. Oh. Right, okay. Right, if we can have Carrie back in. <laughs> <laughs> right, do you want us to sit down? 
Yeah, yeah stay together. together. Right. Fine. Yeah. Right, when I asked Henry how much toothpaste has <laughs> Carrie put on her toothbrush, <laughs> A, a round blob, B, <laughs> half a brush, or C, the whole length of the brush, what did he say? I think he probably yeah. said the whole length of the brush. Yeah. <laughs> shift and you had a power cut in the house, would you A, go straight to the candles, B, report it to the electricity board, or C, ring Henry? I'd go straight to the candles. Yes, that's right. She said, yeah. no, no, she said right candy candy. Yes, I'd go straight right, to the candles. Right, okay. Even though you've got no candles in the house. <laughs> well, I've got one in my cabin bag. Bye. Oh, right. oh, Torch. The sun coming out. <laughs> uh, right. Actually, I like we have brushes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and when I asked Henry what colour shoes you were wearing tonight, what colour did he say? Pink. No. <laughs> white. <laughs> 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 right. Must have been the white boots oh, in the car. That's, that's what I was wearing today, oh, yeah. baby. In the day. Yeah. Wow. Always changes. What would she prefer to choose? A, £2,000, B, a diamond ring, or C, a new car? £2,000, I think. Um, where sweets are concerned, which is her favourite licorice all sorts? <laughs> or doesn't she like licorice all sorts? Um, yes, she likes them, but I, I think she probably have the ones that's got all the little pimples on. The ring ones. The round ones with the little jewels. Yeah. It's a long time ago since she's had any. Right. Okay. And yeah. if if um, you were asked to participate in a TV chat show, what would Joan's reaction be? Would she say yes, let's go and have a go? Or would she be say no, I think we should really go away and pray about it? Or would she see avoid it like the play? No, let's have a go. Let's have a go. Okay. Can we have Joan back in? When, if you had the preference to choose, what would you choose? A, two thousand pounds. B, a diamond ring. Or C, a new car. A new car. Well, it's what you said you wanted this afternoon. I think you may. <laughs> okay. Uh, when I asked Ken what your favourite licorice all sort was, what did he say, or did he say that you don't like licorice all sort? I expect he said I wasn't very keen on them. Oh. Oh. No, he said that you like the ones with the little pimples on. No, that's the ones I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're really got the truth here. Yeah. If you were asked to participate in a TV chat show, would you A, say, yep, let's go and have a go? Would you say, no, I think we should pray about it? Or C, no, avoid it like the play? Well, we're here, aren't we, doing our TV <laughs> <laughs> Depends what it is. If it's something a bit off, we, if we were doubtful, we'd pray about it. Uh, we might go into it. <laughs> That's a difficult one. <laughs> that is difficult. Yeah, an answer. You don't want to give an answer. Just say it's all above board. All right, we'll go and do it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Building up this family with Christians, and I'm thrilled for every one of you. And uh, I've done my bit. That's all I was asked to do. So I'll leave it to it. And this is something that we'd like you to share between us, on behalf of us all. <laughs> I must say, we started off, we thought we'd get a wedding cake for our friends here. And then suddenly, last week, <laughs> so I put congratulations on there. And then, of course, the next thing we find, we got little Joy, who's going to be one next week, is it? Or? 23rd. Soon, anyway. And then when we had David here, well, we thought we've got to put candles on the cake. <laughs> so it's a multi-celebration cake. Uh, <laughs> so if you two would like to cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, we let Dad know. Who is the king of the universe? The jungle. 